technology of the lithium-ion batteries to understand uh, which materials uh, do you find in these batteries. I will talk very short about the market forecast and furthermore on the waste stream prediction in future. And there we can see uh, the, the motivation for the recycling. Then I will talk about the recycling itself, the pre-processing uh, and uh, uh, different ways of recycling operations, chemical, uh, metallurgical, uh, high temperature processes. And what are the challenges and the limits of those recycling technologies? And then I will close with our approach. It's a new technology uh, where we uh, adapt an induc inductively heated packed bed of graphite material in order to recover the lithium uh, isolated. Short introduction on the, on the batteries. Uh, they have different types of cells uh, consisting of lithium, cobalt, but also uh, oxide and uh, many other materials. Where do we, we find this lithium? Normally in the cathode, but in future not only, but normally in the cathode. And here we find the cobalt as well. We find the anode graphite, we have an electrolyte, we have aluminum, we have copper, and outside we have uh, polymers, uh, and uh, and many materials more. So it's a quite complex combination of various materials. Uh, why do we have so many different types of lithium-ion batteries? First of all, there are different applications uh, for stationary energy storage, for mobile electronics, e-mobility. And therefore, there are different needs on the specific properties. Uh, for example, for the energy and power density, cycle stability, safety, most important, maybe not most, but very important, and cost. And therefore, there's a lot of research going on on these uh, lithium-ion batteries, uh, first to improve uh, the batteries continuously, and very important to reduce the costs and to increase the sustainability, also social uh, sustainability, not only the environmental sustainability. And therefore, we have so many different types of lithium-ion batteries uh, of uh, different size, different shape, and most important, of uh, different, different uh, chemical composition. So, uh, here are just a few examples. Lithium combined with cobalt, manganese, nickel, cobalt, aluminum, nickel, cobalt, manganese uh, with iron. Uh, normally, the anode materials, uh, normally the anode material is graphite, but also lithium titan oxide comes up more and more. And since cobalt is very expensive, uh, one aim is to, uh, instead of using cobalt, uh, using nickel, manganese, at least to reduce the share of cobalt. And uh, in, the, in the figure uh, below, you see it doesn't matter uh, about uh, which battery we're talking, we have always lithium in these lithium-ion batteries. And uh, this classical lithium-ion uh, battery with cobalt consists uh, 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 of uh, a lot of cobalt, of course, but the aim is to reduce this share due to cost, due to sustainability. Uh, it's no secret, uh, these market predictions within the next decades, uh, we will need much more batteries in order to store uh, renewable energy like solar energy, wind energy, hydropower, bioenergy, geothermal energy. 
and uh, we also face the rise of the electric cars. Therefore, we need uh, a lot of batteries as well. And uh, the market predictions for the lithium ion batteries, therefore, is very positive. So we are here at the moment at uh, about 300 gigawatt hours. And in 10 years, uh, it looks like that we will uh, have a factor by seven and we will need uh, more than 2000 gigawatt uh, hours for storage. Most of all in the passengers' uh, uh, vehicles. If you have a, a, what is the motivation of recycling? If we look for cobalt, we find it here in this diagram. So we have a problem with uh, supply, with the supply uh, chain, uh, and it's economic, very important. At the moment, lithium, uh, there is a small, slightly smaller supply risk, but this will increase, and therefore, in a couple of years, the lithium will be found in this uh, uh, right upper square as well. And uh, talking about the cost, cobalt is, of course, the most expensive uh, uh, element. Uh, we're talking about in context with batteries. Lithium is at the moment quite cheap, but this will increase because also in future uh, cobalt will be reduced, but the share of lithium will rise uh, very strong. So a short summary on the introduction. So uh, lithium ion batteries uh, are used in the a very wide variety of applications and the share of uh, lithium ion batteries will increase in the short and medium term. The required materials are uh, valuable and partly listed by the EU as critical raw materials. But not only that, it's also important to account for the uh, social sustainability. If you think about the conditions where uh, uh, the uh, where cobalt is mined, for example, in Africa, which are not very uh, uh, social, and a lot of work is uh, uh, invested in order to get the uh, batteries cheaper, more efficient, safer, and as I mentioned at the beginning, whenever we start to develop new products, new materials, at the same time, we should think about the recycling processes because that's a huge challenge because of these various combinations uh, of, of materials. And this is our motivation to think about these recycling processes. This is uh, quite complex due to the different materials and how they stick together and how they are combined. So first of all, uh, it's a challenge to collect and sort the batteries. Due to the wide variety, they are not marked clearly, you always have a mixture of different uh, uh, batteries. And then we can start with the recycling, which con uh, consists mainly of three different steps. The pretreatment, uh, during the pre-treatment, we recover the casing materials, electronic components, we disassemble uh, the cells uh, at the cell level, and then it's uh, necessary to deactivate the cells for mechanical treatment. That means we have to get rid of the electrolyte uh, uh, due, to the, uh, due to safety, uh, for safety reasons. Uh, then uh, the mechanical treatment uh, follows uh, the shredding of the cells in order to be able to separate the different materials after the shredding, to separate, the, uh, uh, to uh, recover uh, the conductor foils and the black matter. We'll talk about the black matter now, a little bit later. 
and then the chemical treatment follows. The treatment of the black matter, and in the black matter you have all the metals, the cobalt, the lithium, uh, and so on. So, uh, mainly we are talking about the uh, uh, processing of the black matter. There is a quite modern uh, recycling process. There's only one process working like that so far in Germany, in uh, Bremen. It's the redox uh, process. Uh, first, uh, the collection and temporary storage takes place, then the pre-sorting, then the discharge. Here you can uh, recover some energy. Then uh, the dismantling takes place. There you can uh, recover electronics, the wiring, plastics, aluminum, iron. Uh, then the sorting takes place, the deactivation by thermal treatment, so we get rid of the electrolyte. This is uh, really important, otherwise due to the shredding, due to the energy you put into the system, uh, the uh, batteries may start burning at high reaction rates. And after the activation, the uh, mechanical process takes place, so shredding and sorting. There you can uh, recycle iron, aluminum, copper, fine material, material. And this fine material is more or less the black matter. And uh, state of the art is a metallurgical treatment. I will talk about that now. So, the treatment of the black matter. So, in the black matter we find the nickel, the cobalt, the lithium, uh, mainly the materials from the cathode active uh, material. But also, therefore it's called black matter, we have the anode active material in it, the graphite. And graphite may cause some problems. Uh, graphite dust is not so easy to precipitate, for example, uh, it's uh, thermal very stable, for example, and that makes it uh, uh, difficult. Mainly there are two different ways uh, of chemical treatment, the pyrometallurgy and the hydrometallurgy. So uh, in the pyrometallurgy, we uh, have high recy uh, recycling rates for nickel and cobalt, but the lithium is slacked due to the oxidation, so we cannot recover the lithium in the gas phase. The products are metal or metal alloys and the slack phase, depending on the input material. Uh, the advantage is you can uh, use the uh, recycled material uh, directly. In the hydro, but sometimes if the purity is not high enough, you need uh, after the pyrometallurgy a uh, hydrometallurgy step. Uh, in the hydrometallurgy, it's possible to recover the metals and also the lithium separately. Uh, but you need a significant share of chemicals, and it's necessary to elaborate the proper process change. But the big advantage is uh, the products can be used directly. So on the right hand side, you see the typical uh, black matter composition. So you have a big share of carbon, nearly 30%, nickel, lithium, 4%, which is not too much, of course, uh, cobalt, aluminum. But this share will uh, increase in future enterprises as well. What is our approach? Uh, the idea is uh, simultaneously uh, recovery of nickel, cobalt, manganese, and lithium from the black matter in uh, a pyrometallurgy, uh, metallurgical recycling process. We developed this process in the past for slags and for recovery of phosphorus from sewage sludge. And we adapt this uh, process for the recycling with lithium ion batteries. You see the uh, sketch on the right hand side. Uh, 
this reactor tube of ceramics is filled with uh, graphite particles and the graphite particles are heated by induction coils, by three induction coils. Uh, this gives us the possibility to adjust the temperature profile uh, in uh, axial direction perfectly for the recovery of the uh, of lithium and we also can manage to have a very smooth radial temperature distribution that means we can really design the proper reaction conditions inside the reactor we feed the black matter and additives in the at the top uh, the uh, black matter is molten uh, flows through the packed bed, therefore the reaction surface is increased, uh, lithium is uh, released, and since we have a very low uh, uh, partial pressure of oxygen, so we are under stoichiometric, uh, lithium leaves as an element uh, the reactor with the gas flow. So it's that's a big difference, so it's not oxidized uh, because then we would find it in the slab, slag. So the uh, molten phase consists of two, two phases actually, slag and a metal alloy, and this uh, uh, we find at the bottom of the reactor. Temperatures are possible of uh, more than 1800 degrees centigrade. Of course, we don't need that high temperatures because the, uh, uh, for, for lithium, 1300 degrees centigrade would be sufficient. Uh, of course, there are some uh, fundamental uh, uh, work, uh, some uh, uh, research is, is necessary to understand the physical and chemical behavior of the black matter. So we did a lot of uh, uh, work on that. For example, the melting behavior uh, without additives and with additives, the melting behavior is important to see at what, what uh, temperature level do we need to run the reaction, uh, what viscosity we will get at this temperature, because the, the slag uh, will, uh, viscosity should be slow enough in order to flow through the reactor, in order to cover the surface of the graphite particles, in order to increase the reaction surface. And uh, uh, we also have a, a small indomelt uh, plant which is con uh, compared to, to this reactor. To, uh, a smaller uh, reactor for for smaller tests, and it consists of just one coil and a smaller packed bed, which can be seen here. So here we can do some preliminary work before uh, doing more extensive work with the indirect plant. You see the indomelt plants, so small graphite bad, we did some uh, preliminary results, we uh, processed the black matter from the redox uh, process from Germany, from Bremen at quite high temperatures, 1600 degrees centigrade, and it was possible to reduce most of the lithium from the black matter. Therefore, you see this nice uh, flame due to the lithium particles. Uh, we also do some experiments with pure cathode materials, not only with the mixture from the uh, mechanical recycling process, from the redox uh, with this black matter, but also with uh, uh, the pure cathode materials. We, which are mixed together uh, to get the same composition as the black matter. So a synthetic black matter somehow. And the interesting thing is there are effects which are not 
yet understood completely. If you have a look at this uh, diagram uh, here on the right hand side, you see the behavior uh, of the black matter from the battery recycling process and the uh, synthetic black matter. It's the, of the same composition, but still the behavior, uh, the, the cross-section area uh, is completely different. Also, also it's, it's uh, the same composition. So here is uh, some fundamental work uh, still necessary and only if we understand that completely, we can uh, work on the process.